Real Science Review Preclinical Trials of New Pain Reliever Drug FFA Student Ray Mr. Mack, did you know that one of my quarter horses can't compete in next month's rodeo because he was really sore feet? The veterinarian says he has something called laminitis. What is that all about? People sometimes get sore feet, but I don't think it is ever like this. FFA teacher, McPherson. Laminitis is unique to horses because their feet take a lot of pounding. The inner anatomy of the hoofs is unique. Laminitis is apparently very painful to horses, and they may become permanently lame. Vocabulary used in the original report. Analgesia. Absence of pain. Antinosusceptive. Pain relieving. Nosusceptive means causing a discomfort that in humans we would call pain. Scientists apply the term to lower animals that receive injury that humans would consider painful if it happened to them. Pain can only be perceived when conscious, and we cannot know if lower animals have the capacity for consciousness. Just being awake is not the same as being consciously aware. Blinding. Blinded. Situation where the person collecting the data does not know the treatment conditions at the time. Purpose is to reduce unintended bias. Carpus. Carpi. The area of the foreleg just above the hoof. Similar to the wrist in humans. Expoxide. A class of chemicals in which the molecule contain a ring of two carbons and one oxygen atom, arranged like an equilateral triangle. Each carbon atom has an attached oxygen or chain of carbon atoms. Superglue contains epoxy groups, but the rest of the molecule is nothing like the epoxy compounds being discussed here in horses. Hydrolase. Hydro refers to water. Lace refers to breaking down. A hydrolase is an enzyme that uses water to break a chemical bond, which typically results in dividing a larger molecule to smaller molecules. An epoxy hydrolase uses water to break down molecules containing epoxy groups. Laminitis, an extremely painful inflammation inside the hoof of horses. Lipopolysaccharide, a large molecule that contains a liquid bound to a number of sugar molecules bonded together. Mg per kg, milligrams of drug per kilogram of body weight. This is the standard way of stating drug dose. Plasma half-life. A measure of how long a chemical lasts in the body it is the post-administration time at which half of the chemical is still present in the blood. Radiocarpal joint. The joint between the radius and carpal bones. Rescue analgesia. Injection of a pain reliever immediately after relevant pain data are collected. A new treatment for laminitis on the horse. Abstract. This study tested the effectiveness of a possible new drug treatment for horse laminitis. Seven adult horses were injected with a lipopolysaccharide irritant into the radiocarpal joint to induce a temporary irritation. Then the horses were injected intravenously with the drug being tested, an epoxide hydrolase inhibitor, TTUCB. Tests with various doses of TTUCB were repeated in the same horses at three-week intervals. Two investigators, blind to the treatment given, assigned pain scores at rest and at trot, degree of lameness, and touch of sensitivity scores before and up to 48 hours after TUCB injection. Pain, lameness, and sensitivity to touch scores were significantly lower with the 1 mg per kilogram dose of drug, but not at lower doses. Plasma half-life of the 1 mg kilogram was 24 plus or minus 5 hours. Introduction. A common way to relieving pain in horses and humans is to use drugs that inhibit the enzyme cyclooxygenase, COX. COX is part of a metabolic pathway that generates painful lipids. At the same time, another pathway generates certain anti-inflammatory fatty acids. However, these fatty acids are rapidly destroyed by another enzyme, epoxy hydrolase. Studies in rodents revealed that inhibition of epoxy hydrolase prevents destruction of the anti-inflammatory fatty acids. These can then counteract the pain caused by COX. References were listed. 
preliminary unpublished studies in horses with laminitis suggested that inhibiting epoxy hydrolase relieved pain. This present study is part of a preclinical trial of various doses of an epoxy hydrolase inhibitor on pain relief. Figure 1. Trauma and irritation enable membrane phospholipids to break into smaller fatty acid residues that activate two further metabolic pathways. The COX pathway generates inflammatory chemicals known as prostaglandins, while the cytochrome P450 pathway produces anti-inflammatory epoxy fatty acids. However, these anti-inflammatory fatty acids cannot produce their effect because they are destroyed by epoxy hydrolase. The theory is that a drug that could inhibit EH would prevent the destruction of the anti-inflammatory epoxy compounds. Epoxy compounds could then accumulate and reduce inflammation and pain. Diagram redrawn and simplified from original. Think about it. In your notebook, put in reminders for the two metabolic pathways activated when cell membranes are damaged, the inflammatory chemicals produced in the COX pathway, the anti-inflammatory chemicals produced in the cytochrome pathway, the significance of inhibiting the epoxy hydrolase in the cytochrome pathway. Materials and Methods Animals and Study Design The carpal joints of seven horses were injected with irritant chemical. Then, horses were injected intravenously with various doses of a drug, TTUCV, or the drug's solvent alone, as a control. A gap of three weeks between each treatment allowed elimination of drugs and the natural reversal of induced pain. Clinical and lameness examinations before testing established that horses were healthy. We conducted blood tests were before and after each treatment. The test design was randomized. Random sequence of drug or placebo. Crossover. Repeat treatment on same animal. Blinded. Researchers did not know whether drug or placebo were given. Synthesis and preparation of T2CUB. We synthesized the drug under test TCUB according to previously published methods the day before each experiment. TTUCB was dissolved in dimethyl sulfoxide to final concentrations of 330 or 90 milligrams per milliliter was filter sterilized with 0.2 micrometer pore size sterilizing grade membranes and placed into sterile 10 milliliter silicone coated glass tubes. These tubes were kept upright at room temperature in the laboratory until usage the next day. The solubility of TTUCB in DMSO at room temperature was confirmed via liquid chromatography, mass spectrometry. Baseline data collection. The day before the experiment, the hairs over the dorsal aspect of both carpi were clipped and baseline data were collected. After overnight fasting, we placed a catheter in both jugular veins following skin desensitization with 1.5 milliliters 2% lidocaine. One catheter was for administering TTUCB or placebo and was subsequently removed. The other catheter was for blood sampling and administering sedatives. This catheter was then removed 24 hours after beginning the experiment. Pain model. Our model induced reversible pain and lameness by injecting an irritant into the radiocarpal joint. This method was selected because other reports found it useful in studies of pain relief in horses. References were cited. Another reason was that a similar approach was used in earlier rodent studies that tested TTUCB for anti-inflammatory and pain relieving effects. Before injecting the irritant, horses were sedated with 0.2 to 0.5 milligrams per kilogram xylazine, and the skin over both carpi was surgically scrubbed before using providone iodine antiseptic soap. One radiocarpal joint was injected with 3 micrograms of the irritant lipopolysaccharide from Estrusia coli, freshly repaired sterile to 1.5 micrograms per milligrams and 0.9% NaCl. The first injected joint was randomly assigned. Subsequent injections alternated between joints. Treatments. All syringes were prepared to contain the same volume of solution. Treatments consisted of 0 0.009 milliliters per kilograms DMSO or 0 0.03, 0 0.1, 0 0.3, or 1.0 
milligrams per kilogram TTUCB. Immediately after LPS injection, we drew 10 milliliters of blood was from the jugular vein catheter and administered the TTUCB intravenously over 30 to 45 seconds. The catheter was then flushed with the aspirated blood and then with 5 milliliters of heparinized to ensure administration of the full dose. Measuring TTUCB tissue concentrations and distribution. We measured plasma drug levels by liquid chromatography slash spectral methods as previously described. Statistical calculations were performed with commercially available software using conventional techniques. Data from the 0.3 milligrams per kilogram of TTUCB were omitted because plasma levels were too low to be measured. Test methods for lameness and analgesia. The main variables of interest were pain and lameness scores. Outcomes were assessed before and at 2, 4, 8, 12, 24, 36, and 48 hours after LPS and treatment. Sequence of procedures was always the same. Blood sampling, physical exams, pain and lameness scoring, and joint fluid collection. Physical examination included heart and respiratory rates, meaning arterial pressure, MAP, and rectal temperature. Carpal joint circumference was determined as an index of swelling with measuring tape positioned at the level of the accessory carpal bone. Two investigators blinded to treatment independently assigned pain and lameness scores at the predetermined time points. Pain scores were assigned with a visual scale for three different conditions at rest in the stall, walking, and then trotting in a straight line, and then averaged to form a final score. The VS corresponds to a 100 millimeter line representing the range of possible pain, 0 equals no pain on the left, and 100 equals worst possible pain on the right. The evaluator places a mark on this line corresponding to the pain severity, and the distance from the left extreme to this mark corresponding to the VS score. Observations of general demeanor, facial expression, position of ears, interest in surroundings, and weight bearing on the LPS injected leg formed the basis for the VS scoring. The VS was shown to be highly reliable when assessing lameness in horses, especially when used by experienced individuals. After the 12-hour evaluation time point, horses with VS greater than 50 millimeters at rest and walk received intravenously 4 milligrams per kilogram phenylbutazone to rescue the horse from pain. The cutoff for rescue analgesia was similar or slightly more stringent to that previously reported in the same pain model. The dose of phenylbutazone was selected primarily on the basis of its clinical use. Results. Two horses had to be withdrawn early from the study for reasons unrelated to this study. They were needed for teaching purposes. Therefore, the number of horses per treatment varied. Physical examination variables. There were no treatment effects on these variables. Drug, blood, and carpal joint levels. The measured plasma and joint concentration of TTUCB are shown in figure 2. Plasma half-life of the 1 mg per kilogram dose was 24 plus or minus 5 hours. Pain and lameness scores. The highest dose of TTUCB markedly reduced both pain and lameness scores at statistically significant levels at the highest dose level of 1 mg per kilogram. Joint fluid cells and proteins. The protein concentration and lucidite numbers increased markedly and statistically significantly after LPS administration in all treatments at the 12 and 24 hour evaluation time points compared to baseline. There were significant increases in percent of neutrophils and a significant decrease in percent of small and large mononuclear cells after LPS injection. There were no significant T2CB treatment effects on blood cells as compared to control. Discussion. This study used an inflammatory joint pain model to assess the antinocisceptive and anti-inflammatory effects of a range of doses of the epoxy hydrolase inhibitor TTUCB. In this model, 1 mg per kilogram TTUCB produced significant antinocisceptive effects, as indicated by decreased response to touch, as well as in pain and lameness scores. There was little anti-inflammatory activity as evaluated by the effects on joint swelling or inflammatory blood number cells and protein concentration in the joint fluid. These results indicate that drug-induced inhibition of EH may relieve inflammatory joint pain in horses. It is worth noting that the levels of TTCB were significantly higher in the joint fluid 
of the inflamed joint compared to the non-inflamed contralateral joint. However, we have no explanation. In a prior study of rats, T2CB doses as low as 0.1 mg per kilogram significantly reduced mechanical hyperalgesia to injection of irritant LPS into the foot pads. A prior study of horses being treated with long-term clinical laminitis showed that adding 0.1 mg per kilogram of T2CB significantly reduced pain indicating behaviors. Notably, this low dose was not effective in the present study. Experimental paradigm species, pain phenotype, diet, health status, concurrent COX inhibitors may have profound influence on the kind and amount of pain-inducing fatty acids and thus the response to treatment with epoxy hydrolase inhibitors. This makes direct comparisons between studies difficult. The current study has several potential limitations to be considered. First, the small sample size for the 0.3 mg per kilogram TTUCB treatment could have produced a false negative result in pain and lameness scores. Second, the cutoff point for rescue analgesia was arbitrarily selected, although it was similar to a previous study using the same model. It is unlikely that the rescue analgesia with phenylbutazone at the 12-hour time point was a significant confounding factor because the pain and lameness findings were the same, whether the data were analyzed for the first 12 hours before rescue analgesia or for the entire 48-hour period. Lastly, xylazine sedation likely did not affect pain and lameness scores at early time points, 2 and 4 hour, because it is a short duration of action, especially at the low doses used in this study. In conclusion, our results indicate that inhibition of epoxy hydrolases may have a role in decreasing inflammatory joint pain and lameness in horses. Future studies are needed for understanding TTUCB and for the role and mechanisms of inflammatory fatty acids and epoxy hydrolases in joint pain.